G'day everyone, Andrew here from Best Wine Wise, and it's my great pleasure to introduce you to Ben Dugdale from Carry Carry Estate. How are you, Ben? I'm very well, Andrew. Very good. Thanks for joining us today. No worries. You are making wine um, in, a, in the far north on Carry Carry Estate. Could you tell us a little bit more about um, where exactly you're making wine and perhaps what makes it so special? Okay, um, Kari Kari Estate is on the Kari Kari Peninsula, which is about four and a half hours north of Auckland, as the car drives. Um, it's kind of stuck out like a crooked hitchhiker's thumb into the Pacific Ocean, um, just north of Kai Taia, but south of uh, obviously North Cape. Um, it's a magic little spot. It's um, it's. It's about 15 to 20 hectares and it just overlooks the Kari Kari Beach and all the way up to North Cape and it's, a, it's quite a fantastic little little area. Um, it's, nobody else grows grapes um, around Kari Kari Estate so I've, it's, it's unusual in that regard as there's the, the flavours and the characters and the, the personality of the wines are almost like no other when it comes to into New Zealand wines. And what makes um, your vineyards unique to somewhere like the Hawke's Bay or Waiheke or any other New Zealand region for that matter? If you're a scientist and want to put numbers on it, um, I could point towards things like the latitude temperature index or the growing degree days, all of which sort of indicate that the area is more akin to Tain Le Hermitage in southern France or um, areas like Western Australia, Margaret River, that type of drama. Mm. Our heat units are actually exorbitantly high. Mm. Um, one of the blindingly obvious things when you taste curry curry state wines is that they, are, they don't have those green characters or those mm. kind of herbaceous um, sort of pea bean characters that come out. Um, and the other thing which they exemplify would be the, the tannins. Uh, in Kari Kari State wines. They're all extremely expressive. They sort of mm. like leap around, bounding around like mm. rabbits in the springtime, really. Um, uh, and th those two characters, they're kind of, they're, so they'll be dissimilar to sort of Hawke's Bay and Waiheke. Um, they'll sort of get close to it though. There are some, there are some Waiheke wines I've had which are pretty similar. Mm. Um, Hawke's Bay wines, whilst like very good, um, and naturally expressive, uh, they do have a little bit of a linearity to them as well. Um, principally, probably because a lot of them are actually grown on the gravels, uh, whereas Kari Kari, it's all pretty much clay based, so we get a little bit more richness and complexity. As you know, we're currently having great success on uh, best wine buyers with the Hell Hole. Now, I've spent a bit of time up in the far north on holiday and so on, and like a lot of others, I would consider it paradise. So, where on earth did you get the name? Hellhole for this wine. Uh, Hellhole is uh, the name, or well, the, the like, the slang name for a town called Kororarika, which uh, is now called Russell. Okay, um, and the reason why it was called Hellhole is because of uh, the reputation it had back in the day, in the early 1800s. Um, it was uh, basically a seafaring port, so if you can imagine a whole bunch of whalers coming ashore, and uh, they've only pretty much got two things on their mind. Um, neither of which would be sort of agrarian practices and tiddlywinks. Um, so it became quite known as uh, an area of kind of raucous, ribald um, uh, behaviour, lots of drinking. Um, desperately trying not to say the word rooting at this point in time. Um, so it became, it was known as the Hell of the Pacific. Now, when I came up with the name, I had. Um, uh, a lot of wine sitting in the cellar and I thought it would be really nice if I could actually uh, construct a wine that really expressed or personified to me what the north was all about and even today it's the, the north has still got that bit of an edge. I mean you holiday up there, mm. it's um, kind of like no other when it comes to other regions. It has a, 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 an honesty and a, a freshness and a frankness um, that if you spend too much time up there it sort of like rubs off on you. Mm. Um, and I thought Hellhole would sort of exemplify what these wines uh, were about. So I thought it would be quite nice, nobody in their right mind would actually put the word Hellhole on a, on a mm. bottle of wine. Um, so that's how that sort of came about, particularly after a couple of nights drinking a few samples, probably too many. Um, and the anchor, the anchor uh, comes from um, a ship that actually anchored off Brodie's Creek, which is just on the other side of the Kari Kari Peninsula. It's, um, there was three anchors laid out by a guy called um, De Serval um, around about Christmas time in 1869 and he lost two of them and they're actually now in the Hohora Museum and the Kaitaia Museum. Um, 
But we just thought that would be quite nice if we could just like anchor the name to the region. Yeah, fantastic. And give that kind of story. Great. And and the wine itself, um, Best Wine Buyers uh, customers have certainly um, fallen in love with it and we, we think it's pretty special. Um, the Cabernet Franc, Cabernet, and Cap a, few, a few little bits and pieces? It's a Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon, um, and there's about equal portions of Tanat, um, Syrah and Pinotage. Yep. So it's a, it's a sort of yeah. typical Northland, yeah. Uh, yeah. characterful expression of, that, of those, yeah. those blends. Yeah, people are loving it for its, its um, for the price we're offering it, I think it actually really, really delivers um, a lovely bit of concentration and a bit of punch. Yep. Um, it's, it's certainly not tutti fruity, um, it's got some real structure to it, um, but at the same time it's quite plush and, and opulent in the mid-palate, there is plenty of fruit there. So a, a bit of something for everyone. We're getting some um, sort of more more serious wine buyers giving us fantastic feedback on this because they they relate it to the wines they're drinking in the sort of 20 to 30 and upwards price category, which I think is a great a great endorsement. Now, Ben, um, I want to finish off here with a bit of a um, rapid fire question, if, 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 if you don't mind, a bit of rapid fire question time, and I don't want you to think about these answers too much because we've heard all sorts of stories about um, you folk in the north and we want to test, test what you're all about. The single best thing about living in the far north? Kaimawana. Best bottle of wine you've ever drunk? A bottle of 1994 Amaranth Pinot uh, Noir from Dry River. Silliest thing you've ever done while under the influence? Drove a 4x4 through the winery and down the steps. Wild pork or bluff oysters? Wild pork. Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc or Wiper Riesling? Wiper Riesling. Fishing or golf? Both. Rap music? or country and western? A blend of the three. <laughs>